Assalamu alaikum. To our weekly Zoom meeting. Um, it is in the name of Almighty God, Allah, Master Farah Muhammad, the human being God to whom all honor and praises will forever and ever and ever be due. We will forever thank Master Farad Muhammad for coming to us, finding us, and raising up in our midst the last and greatest messenger of Allah, the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. May the peace and blessings of Allah forever be upon his holy name. And in the name of our Lord and Savior, the Honorable Silas Muhammad, Chief Executive Officer of the Lost and Found Nation of Islam, the Son of Man and Earth of this hour, that they want in the midst of four beasts. And I would be remiss in my duties if I did not also give honor and praise and a great mention to our dearly beloved Queen, Queen Mashaki Muhammad. Assalamu alaikum. This is um, for us, I believe, I want to say maybe our eighth and or maybe our 10th uh, weekly Zoom meeting. So for those of you all who have consistently um, tuned in, I want to take the time out to personally thank you uh, for that. I want you to know that this is for us, uh, the Lost Foundation of Islam, um, an attempt to gather our people to give you information to hope to solidify your decision. We are seeking to gather our people to get them the necessary information to make an informed decision to join on to the Lost Foundation of Islam, Afro descendant government, and join with us in engaging and or embracing your destiny. You are destined to return home after 400 years of slavery. That is your destiny. It is inside of the Bible. It is inside of the Quran. It is inside of any holy book that you can get your hands on bears witness to the fact that there will be a people who will be lost. They would not have the knowledge of themselves for 400 years. And that that people would receive one of their own one of their own, so they could not have the excuse of saying that this person who came to us was a foreigner, so that he can deliver the information and or the message to them plainly. That is the moment that we are in. We have marched up to this moment. And the reason I use the word march is because march is faster than a run. It's fast, I'm sorry, march is slower than a run. It's slower than a trot. It's more than slower than a drive. We have marched up to this moment to where now the information should be so plain, so says the scripture, that a baby can understand. So that's what we are attempting to do, the Lost Foundation of Islam, to give you the information, make it so plain that a child can understand it with the hopes that you stand with us. Now, Master Farad Muhammad, when he came to us, he told us, that his father was a jet black man, that there were 24 scientists, and that there were 12 scientists who met in the root of civilization concerning us, you and I, the Lost Foundation of Islam. And that when these scientists met, they conferred that the Lost Foundation of Islam must return to their own. There was one of the conference members by the name of Mr. Osman Sharif, he would make the statement that the Lost Foundation of Islam would not return to their own unless they had a thorough knowledge of themselves. So that's what I'm seeking to do today, to give you a thorough knowledge of yourselves, um, to collate that statement, to bring it full circle. Then there was one who said that the old prophet predicted that you would only get 144,000 that the rest of them are too poison and they're too rusty and that they would not take the knowledge of themselves. That 144,000 that you would get will be called the stars of heaven. 
th they would be the ones in spite of them being tore down in spite of them being taken as i mentioned on last week from a god state to a neutral or a dead state the word that they use for that is nigger negro or negro that that 144,000 upon receiving the information about the knowledge of themselves that they would get up that they would coalesce that they would return home and that as a result of them getting up as a result of them coalescing to return home that they would be put on the top that they would be given information and I, I really, 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 really hope that you hear me. That they will be given information that the rest of their people were not given in Africa and Asia. When you look at the Caucasian, you look at his history. You look at them bearing witness to being cavemen. I would quite often have a conversation with my wife as we are in the city of Chicago and that neighbors the suburb of Oak Park, Illinois, and Forest Park. And Oak Park, Illinois, and Forest Park has some beautiful homes. They're, they're not, some of them even call estates because they're like a block long. And my wife would make the statement, imagine putting your key inside of that door. I will go on to say to her, imagine being told while you were a caveman who didn't know how to make fire, who didn't know how to bury their dead, who were absolutely positively savage, hair all over their body, eating their food raw, as some of them still do today, eat their food raw with blood coming out of them. Imagine being in that state, not being able to leave Europe, and then being told in that moment that you're gonna run the entire earth. That for them had to have been a quantum leap in the mind, and for some of them, they felt that that's a virtual impossibility. We can't even leave Europe. The, 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 the Egyptians, uh, 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 the, the, the Meccans, the, the Asians, the Africans, they won't even allow us to leave Europe. And now you're going to tell me that we're going to run all of this, we're going to control them, all of this will be ours for the taking. Those that did accept that information from their prophet named Musa and held to it, we today call them Jews. Judaism is a religion. It is not a race of people. So those that held true to that information, we see them today as a result of embracing that information, being on top of the world. So that that God promised to them, no matter what deplorable state they were in, today we see that it has come into fruition. So I'm telling you that you are prophesied, that you're predicted, it is your destiny. White people used to call it their manifest destiny, that it was the will of God to make black people slavery, that it was God's doing to put things the way they are, white on top and the black on bottom. And I will agree with them on that. Well, today you are in a similar position, black man, black woman, black children. It is God's destiny. It is your manifest destiny to join on to your own and to be put on top. You are the lost foundation of Islam. You are from a tribe called the tribe of Shabazz. That tribe of Shabazz went into the jungles of Africa, as they call it now, but it was called East Asia at that time, left the holy city of Mecca, Arabia, left Arabia, went on down into Africa to create a people. And I showed you that on last week, that was so tough that they could conquer the jungles. We did conquer the jungles of Africa. Now, at this very moment, October, 2021 the door is closing fast i know you are distracted i know they're giving us all kind of sedatives for some of us i told you a sedative could be music it could be food drugs they're giving you things to rock you back to sleep and while those things are taking place the door is closing we are approaching the time where you must accept your own, accept your people, and head for the exit. Lest you get trapped. And when you get trapped, I'm telling you, I'm personal, there's no reverse button on judgment. God doesn't start to judge the people until he's justified. So he doesn't start to judge you and say, wait a minute, I made a mistake. Let's go back. No. 
when judgment starts, he's he he you know he's well justified. Rain, hail, snow, earthquakes, drought, famine, fire, war, famine, disease. We're inside of those moments. Currently, we have a disease known as the coronavirus. And that coronavirus and or COVID-19, some people believe that it was started by one or two Caucasians who had a desire to reduce the population. When we tell you that God is the greatest or Allah is the greatest, and there's something that's going on that's affecting the entire planet, I don't care whom you give credit to, what particular individual it was. Allah will either allow you Allah. to make progress with something or he will stop you. So if they are allowed to make progress with it, know that that is the will of Allah being done. Understand that. The tribe of Shabazz concerning you and your return home, what must be done? How many of you we're looking for? 144,000. You are a special people. You are a holy people. You are a divine people. You are a people that was used for 400 years for what they call experimental purposes. Now, Master Farah Muhammad Father, we are told, some of us accept the information uh, wholeheartedly. Some of us are in doubt about it. Nevertheless, we're told, Master Farah Muhammad Father was named Alfonso. And that Master Farad Muhammad father made an attempt himself to come into the United States of America to get you. And that he received rejection. He received some friction. Certain things took place to where he couldn't come inside of the United States of America to get you. Now, we're told that he decided that he would make a son. And that this son, while having the appearance of a Caucasian, would be black, lighter, fair-skinned. And that he would send his son into the United States of America, well, send his son looking for you, not just in the United States of America. And that on the first attempt, he got a girl. Now, we do know that this information was verified by the most honorable Elijah Muhammad, may the peace and blessings of Allah forever be upon his holy name. That the honorable Elijah Muhammad did tell us that Master Farad Muhammad has a sister. That on the first attempt to get him, he got a girl, and his father said, I miss that time. So we do know that Master Farad Muhammad has a sister. Very little was known about Master Farad Muhammad's sister. Very little was known about where she is, what her mission is, and how she fits in the whole scheme of things but he did tell us that he has a sister. On the second attempt, he did get Master Farad Muhammad. And once Master Farad Muhammad was born, that he was prepared to come and find the lost sheep. There's some information. I need an opportunity. There's some information, and I'm gonna read this to you. And as I read it to you, I just want you to Relax yourselves, connect with me, become one mind, one spirit with me, and just walk with me. Again, some of this information we have verified by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who is the authority on Master Farah Muhammad, and some of it we do not have verified. Perchance, there were people who got certain information from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad when they had table talks with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and all of the table talks were not reported. Perchance there is a minister or a captain or a brother and or sister who spent personal time with the Honorable Elijah Muhammad and were privy to some of these conversations. As we know, that it's not a teaching. We didn't hear a teaching from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad about exercise, but the Savior, our Lord and Savior, the Honorable Silas Muhammad had a personal conversation with the messenger and he said the messenger said to him the only thing that he hate that he disobeyed a lie and was that he didn't exercise so not only should you eat right but also you should exercise to keep your body in good health he said that master farad muhammad told him 
Don't just sit around the house and teach, brother, but also exercise and keep your body in good health. Now, we don't find that in any one of the writings and or teachings from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, but we do know that our Lord and Savior, the Honorable Silas Muhammad, had that personal experience with him. And that as we go forth, and as the books are being written and we go forth to produce our nation, to produce our society, that we have to make it something among us as a people, a teaching, a way of life, that we do exercise, that we teach our children to exercise, that we begin to do things to keep our bodies in good health and create longevity, where you can live 100, 200, 300, 400. We were told that we lived a 1,000 years old, that there were those of us that ate once a week, once one every seven days. The regeneration of the cells can take place in the body for approximately a 1,000 years eating the right food and exercising. That has to become a way with us and our society in order to return back to longevity. Master Farad Muhammad. This is called the story of Alfonso, his father. It says, Master Farad Muhammad's father is known by the name of Master Alfonso Ibn Allah. Some say that he was born in 1822 in Timon, Arabia, and was eventually announced that he was actually a member of the elite group of scientists known as the 24 elders. He in fact was known as the 24th elder, Allah, which means the 24th scientist. He is the one, listen to this, he is the one who is to lead and judge. Now we do know that Master Farah Muhammad father, and I say this before, had to have put forth an eloquent argument to the other scientists to take the time up to come and get us. Because 144,000 people out of, at that time, approximately three or 4 billion people. Now look at the mindset of Master Farah Muhammad's father to take the time to prepare someone to come and get you. Who are you to where the 24 scientists, 12 at that particular time who, intended, who attended the conference would take up the time to come and get you? I oftentimes wondered about that, what that conversation was. The Savior, our Lord and Savior, the Honorable Silas Muhammad, shed some light on it. He told us that if word was not bond, then you wouldn't have been found. So when your brother gave his word 50,000 years ago to Mr. Shabazz, that he would come and get you when you had lost the knowledge of yourself, that had to been passed down from generation to generation to generation until the time was right to actually prepare someone to come and get you. I'm gonna read a little farther. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad described that Master Alfonso as a jet black man. This description of Master Alfonso as a jet black man relates to the fact that he was an original man and that his bloodline did not have any level of interbreeding or mixture with any other race. As the 24th scientist, Master Alfonso knew the future in advance. Master Farad Muhammad's father wanted to go and search the lost tribe of Shabazz. This tribe was taken into bondage into a strange land that was not their own. Master Alfonso would attempt to enter America, but was denied entry. As a result of this, he decided to produce a son that would be able to enter America more easily than the pitch black man of royalty. It goes on to say, it was believed that this lost tribe was the key to unlocking the DNA of the original people of the planet Earth. Now, again, some of this information is verified, some of it still needs further verification. Some of it we're told came from Sister Tynetta Muhammad, which is one of the wives of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Goes on to say, this DNA had been dormant in a dormant state for the past 50,000 years. There were originally 12 strands of DNA. Currently 10 of these strands are dormant. It goes on to say, Master Farah Muhammad's father decided to produce his son who will be able to travel freely throughout the world. Master Alfonso got a wife 
from the Caucasus Mountains of Europe and cast out seven devils before producing a child. First, he produced Master Farah Muhammad's sister. Then on the second trial, he produced Master Farah Muhammad, who would be the savior of the lost found nation of Islam, black people and the slavery diaspora. Now, again, some of that information is solid. We know it is. There's pieces of that information that still needs verification. One of the things that I lock in on and that I want you to lock in on is the fact that there's something inside of those of us in the United States of America that they were looking for. So when Master Farah Muhammad was produced when he was made, we're told that his father said he paid a pretty penny to get pieces of information from this person and or that person. Master Farah Muhammad, when he was produced and made and given his mission, he told us that he was in and out of America ever since 1913. He made himself known July 4th, 1930. So 1913 and 1930, that's approximately 17 years. What was he looking for? Now, and my analyzing the information and me looking at where Mecca is situated, me looking at where Arabia is situated, I've concluded that Master Farah Muhammad was not just looking for Black people. I'm going to put up a picture of the world map, and I'm going to show you where Mecca is situated, where Arabia is situated. And my reason for doing this is because I want you to see how readily available black people were at that time. That Master Farah Muhammad did not have to travel across Africa in order to get black people. Here's, here's the map. And I'm going to point out some things in the map. Can you see the map? Yes. Okay. Now, Make the map larger for me. Now you see on the map, you see Saudi Arabia or Arabia as it's called. That they got that name Saudi from the Saudi royal family. That's where that name came from. But it's named Arabia. Now, looking at Arabia and or Saudi Arabia, you see if you go to the west. One of the first places you see is Egypt. You see that? You see Egypt. If you go down, you see the Sudan. If you go down just a tad bit further, you see Ethiopia. Can you see it? Yes. yes. Okay. So you see Egypt, you see the Sudan, you see Ethiopia, you go further west, you see Libya, you see Chad, you see Niger. You see Niger, you see Mali, you see Liberia. You see up, you see Morocco. Now, all of these places at the time of Master Farah Muhammad's conquest to come and find us were densely populated and are still today with Black people. So if Master Farah Muhammad was just looking for Black people, he could have went in any one of those places. That's just heading west from where he was at. Not to mention that if we go, West, if we go south and north, the entire continent of Africa is densely populated with Black people. So I conclude, you should conclude, we should conclude that he wasn't just looking for 
black people. And that in order to leave Arabia and make it to the United States of America, that was a journey. Go back to the map. Please. And that an event that he was looking for black people that had been, make it a little smaller for me, the black people that just had been kidnapped and had been brought into slavery. As you come outside of, from the East, outside of Africa to go over the Atlantic Ocean, you see Brazil. Now you know that we have Afro descendants inside of the United States of America that were kidnapped, brought to America for the purposes of slavery. But the most densely populated place with Afro descendants is in Brazil. Do you hear me? Now, if he was just looking for Black people that had been kidnapped and brought west for slavery, he could have easily found us in Brazil because we were definitely in Brazil and we're definitely in Brazil now. And then when you go from Brazil, you go into some of these other what they call Latin American nations and or countries. Master Farah Muhammad, after coming to us in the United States of America, made us aware that he had been preparing to give us this information. So you see Brazil, Bolivia, Colombia, Venezuela, Argentina, even inside of Mexico. Some of us are not aware that there is a dense population of Afro descendants in Mexico, as dark as you and I. But they call themselves African or Afro Mexicans. You don't hear a lot about them. You don't see them a lot. Typically, when you see someone from Mexico, they were pale, swin, pale skin and look almost like Italians. So, Master Farad Muhammad passed up. Who's to say if he went into Brazil or not, or went into Mexico or not? Came across Africa, came across the Atlantic Ocean. 9,000 miles and found you. Now, when he was in and out of the United States of America, ever since 1913, what was he looking for? And whatever it was that he was looking for, he found it inside of you and I. Make it bigger. Now, mind you, at this time, the thing that was taking place at this time concerning you and I, as it relates to our national identity, our international identity, we were being dehumanized. This book I have is called The Scramble for Africa, second edition by M.E. Chamberlain. And on page 94, the third paragraph, they go on to say, the slave trade is the greatest obstacle in existence to civilization and commercial progress. And as the English are the more philanthropic people in the world, and will probably always have the largest commercial stake in the African continent, the policy suppression is ever possible, ways through wisdom or foresight. Most writers believe Blacks to be savages. This is what's being said. This is how you're being painted. And this is how the world is looking at you as being a savage. It says, most writers believe that Blacks to be savages. Nearly all Blacks <laughs> are savages. It goes on to say, in reference to the status of the Africans among the nations of the earth, we have seen nothing to justify the notion that they are of a different species or breed from the most civilized. The African is a man with every attribute of, him, him, of, of humankind. Centuries of barbarism have been the same deterioration effects on the Africans. He goes on to say, I'm going over to page 95, second paragraph. Most of the country of the Tanzania to the West Coast is one almost of unspeakable riches 
metals, iron, copper, silver, and gold also found. The vegetables produced at the palm trees, cotton, nutmeg, besides several sorts, and coffee are all grown wild. The people cultivating several other oil productions of plants, such as ground nuts and sesame. The Arabs, as far as they have come, have introduced rice, wheat, and a few other fruits and vegetables. So they're talking about what the continent is producing. And then as much as the continent of Africa is producing oil, gold, diamond, fruits, nuts, so on and so forth, that you are, as a people, according to them, savages. And that according to the justification of the scramble for Africa, that they did you a favor by making you slaves. That you were just like gorillas, monkeys, and or orangutans. You were just a little step closer to human beings than they were. Now, while this was being propagated about you, Master Farah Muhammad was going across the earth looking for you. Had every reason in the world to not look for you because you weren't a pretty sight. Then, a lot of us are not a pretty sight right now. A lot of us to this day are still what they call functional illiterates. And then as much as you're being promoted before the rest of the earth today in 2021 as being a savage. Were they to use Martin Luther King's criteria to judge you, judge them by the continent of their character and not the color of their skin, what would you be judged as? With your pants hanging down below your waist and your underwear showing? With tattoos on your face and braids on your hair? The disrespecting of your women? The not claiming your children? There was just something recently in the headlines to where the rapper Bow Wow was denying his child and had to go and get a DNA test and they told him that the child is his. That's rampant throughout the black community. What does your character say about you today? What does your character say about your children today? You've lost control of your children. One of the ways that you have lost control of your children is through the music. I have to go on record saying this, and I'm a person that was brought up listening to rap music. I'm a person to where that particular genre of music was my preference. But I have to go on record and say today, in order to fulfill your destiny, in order to climb to the apex of society, we have to band together and stop the production of rap music. It is one of the things that has caused us to descend into being savages. 95% of the rappers in rap music go on a tangent of disrespecting black men and black women. Nigga this, nigga this, whore this, whore that, be this, be that. And while they're saying it, your mind is relaxed because of the music, because of the beat that's there. So your guard is totally down. You have up no defense. And when your guard is totally down, they're pouring white supremacy into our head through rap music. White supremacy is kill a black man, disrespect a black man kill a black woman, disrespect a black woman. Some of them have even gotten to the fact to what they say in their music. Not only will I do this, do this, and shoot this nigga, shoot that nigga, kill this woman, kill, I kill the children. I go to the funeral and shoot the casket up. All this inside of the music that your children are listening to today. And that God is totally down because it has a nice, soothing beat to it. Or sometime a, a live, up-tempo kick beat to it, something that you can move to, something you can groove to. And while you're moving and grooving, they're pouring that into your head and it's destroying you. It's taken away the glory that was once given to you by the lost foundation of Islam. When the entire world looked to you to be the leaders because you were clean, you were respectful, you had shines on your face, you had your face glow. You were a people who were creating a society while you were in hell to be revered by all other civilized men and women on the planet Earth. That was the desire of Master Farah Muhammad. He knew that you were that people that were lost, that you had something inside of you that nobody else had inside of them. So Master Farah Muhammad, while coming in and out of the United States of America, 1913 up into 1930, I can only imagine what he was saying, what, document, what documents he was taking down. 
What was his reports? Who was he going back to? And when did he make the conclusion that you were the people? What was it about you that he saw that he did not see in anybody else? So I'm gonna go to this video and this is going to give you some information to solidify inside of you who you are and what you are capable of. And what Master Farah Muhammad must have saw, he was still, he told the Honorable Elijah Muhammad at that time his father was still alive and what he must have went back and reported to his father. What he went back and told the other scientists, what the other scientists then told their children. And then at a certain point he told us what? It is now universally known that you have been found, that we found them, we got them. Mr. Shabazz, we got that one that we were looking for. That one that got a special something inside of him. That God that's capable of speaking truth without error. That man, that woman that's capable of being at the apex of society and being a perfect example of what human beings should be. That person that's capable of displaying freedom, justice, and equality to all people on the earth. That God, that person that created the heavens, the earth, and the universe that's still locked inside of you. And when he found it, he went back and told his father. When he found it, the other scientists then had that information and spread it throughout the rest of the earth. Now, not only did they have it, not only did they know it, but at that point in time, when it became universally known, your nemesis, your enemy, the Caucasian white man had it as well. So he didn't just sit down when that information came and allow you to raise up. He went on the campaign. Today, he calls it, you know it as, you can look it up for yourself, the COINTELPRO. The COINTELPRO, the specific reason for inventing the COINTELPRO was to stop the rise of a black messiah. Now digest that for a minute. The stop, you can look it up. Just Google it, the COINTELPRO, and put in those words specifically. The stop the rise of a black messiah. Now, first off, who would want to stop the rise of Jesus? That's the other name for the Messiah. Jesus. Who would have intentions to stop Jesus? We got a name for him inside of the Bible. It's called the dragon. It's called the serpent. That beast that wanted to devour the child as soon as it was born. That, so now they're telling you that they got a desire, the United States of America, the Corinthian, Pro, they have a desire to stop the child. They have a desire to destroy the child, to stop the rise of a black messiah. Somebody that can electrify, unite the masses of the people. Because if he can electrify you and unite you in the masses, you would embrace your destiny and return home. And oh, what a glorious day that's gonna be. You should wanna be repatriated with your people. You shouldn't wanna lose another one of us inside of American soil. We want to be buried in our own country, among our own people. We want to live among our own people. That's what we want. That's the desire of any civilized man and or women is to be with their own. And they know that that's your destiny. So they're fully engaged in trying to stop you from embracing your destiny. The COINTEL Pro. Now, this video is going to bear witness <laughs> to who you are. It's gonna give you some information that's necessary. I want you to take this information. I want, it to, I want you to show it to your children. I want you to show it to your babies. I want you to show it to your teenage children. Start feeding them stuff so they can grow. Start feeding them things so they can have some self-worth. They're not niggas. They're not game bangers. They're not savages. They're not punks. They're not bees or hoes or marks or niggas or dogs as they refer to themselves. Listen to how your children refer to themselves. Listen to how the teenagers refer to themselves. That does something to them psychologically, that deduces them, that takes away from them. But give them this information and let them know that they are these people and this is who they really are. And the reason why God took up the time to come and get you in the first place is because the earth can't get right unless you get right. That's the reason why the scripture said, hello, I send you Elijah before the great and dreadful day of the Lord. 
least I smite the earth, the entire earth with a curse. Now don't wonder whether or not it can be done because you see the coronavirus doing what? Hitting the entire earth. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad came, did his job. He said that the destruction couldn't take place until they knew that you had the information, the knowledge of yourself. You, you have that now. There's no denying it now. That's the reason why I'm telling you the time that you're in is so sensitive. There's not one person above the age of 25 years old that you can't mention the Lost Foundation of Islam, a Muslim, a Dean Pai, Malcolm X, Muhammad Ali, Elijah Muhammad too, and they don't tell you that they don't know who those individuals are. That means that the information now is universally known, it's been spread. There's a little bit of a delay, a respite as we would call it. And that respite is because Allah is the most merciful. I'm thankful that it did not take place July 4th, 1930, or I wouldn't have been here. I'm thankful that it did not take place 1966, or I wouldn't have been here. I'm born in 1976. I got the information in the early 2000s and embraced it. So I'm grateful to Allah that he's the most merciful and that that respite was given. Now, it's on you. It's not just on our Lord and Savior, the Honorable Silas Muhammad. It's on you. It's on each and every one of us. Part of the lesson says, now that you know the number and the computation of the time, it's on each and every one of you labors to help figure this out. So we were not delegated a responsibility. We were empowered. We're called saviors now. We were empowered to take the information, learn, and go and teach our people. Let me get to this video. of all of this, well, to explain, we are joined tonight by Mike Novacek, a provost of science at the Museum of Natural History here in New York City. Welcome back. Just a second. Why aren't you the landlord? Yes, you. Why aren't you the landlord? Every day, you go... Here's a copy of the, the front piece, and a copy is where you can find it. When they know who they are from the African. Okay. Just a second, just a second, bear with me. Okay, can you see the video? Yes. yes, sir. Historical point of view. Now, here's what I found out in a little tiny thing. Geneticists. Can you identify where they're from and how it came about? Yeah, okay. Study? All right, sure. Yes, indeed. As a, an organization is called the American Association for the Advancement of Science. The American Association for the Advancement of Science. Now, this organization is composed of people who study about DNA and the genome. And you've been reading about the DNA and the genomes. Well, this group of scientists came upon an idea by accident and at first that different groups of people had different numbers of DNA series. Explain that. Now, a DNA series means that when your DNA is located and say they get a hair from your head and they you subject it to certain tests, they say, well, this is the DNA of Minister Brown and yours is different from everybody else in the world, all right? Then they found further that not only are their DNA series different, but the number of DNAs in there are different in different groups. Whites have a different number of DNA, and Blacks have a different number of DNA series. Apes have a different number of DNA series. Then they found this amazing thing, that the greater the number of DNA series, the smarter the person, the group is, the greater the probability of genius within that group. Now, I stopped it because I want you to hone in and listen to that. The greater the amount of DNA series, 
<laughs> the greater chance that you are intelligent and or will become genius, the higher your DNA series is. Now, that's something that if you have an opportunity to write it down, write it down. If not, the video is being recorded. We hope to, without any interruptions, I had any, I had interruptions about the last video that we did and uploading it to YouTube so you can view it again at your leisure. But I want you to take that name, that title, that information, DNA series down and research it for yourself. The greater number of DNA series determines how intelligent you are. Do you hear me? I'm, 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 I'm saying it because Master Farad Muhammad, father, Master Farad Muhammad himself, they were looking for something. He, he didn't tell the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, I was in and out of the country ever since 1913, just to tell him that. There's no telling what other information that he gave to the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. I'm sure that the messenger didn't give you all of it, that he didn't divulge all of the facts. Certain things he was told, brother, keep this to yourself. I can only imagine. Write that down. I'll let the brother further elaborate on this. So they tested the orangutans, these 15 geneticists from around the world. That now, these geneticists came from nine different universities. And we have here on the cover of the pamphlet they put out, the name right there, right beneath, right beneath the title of this pamphlet. Now this pamphlet, most people have no idea where to study it and have it explained to you by a geneticist, a trained geneticist. You will find that they're talking about DNA series. Now, here are the names of these 15 geneticists from around the world, University of Japan, University of China, Yale University is the headquarters of this organization called the American Association for the Advancement of Science. And you see it down there. Now, this was copyrighted in 1996. All right. What it said is this, and this is, this is the mind-blowing part. It said that when they tested the orangutan, they found out he only had three DNA series. When they tested the gorilla, they found that the gorilla had four DNA series, but they're a little, he's a little smarter than the orangutan. They tested the chimpanzee, which is an ape, and found that he had five DNA series. Then they went into, they went all into the different races of the world. They went into Europe and tested the DNA series of the English, the French, the German, the Spanish, the Russians, and found they had six DNA series. Then they put all of this, what they found from around the world on a map. And this map really is called the intelligence map of the world because they tested 116 different human groups and found their DNA series number. All of them, all over the world, have six. And they put the numbers in form of a little flag that you can see on this map. These little flags have a color. And they show, oh, this is, it's upside down. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. And they show that the English have only six, and all into Europe, only six, went over into Japan and China, and they only have six. Over into America with a predominantly European, and they only have six. Then they came to Africa. And they came to the part of Africa. Now, all the rest of them, they put in little flag colors 
Those flag colors are, are orange red, if you notice. But when they came to Africa, found out that the African people have mm -hmm. nine, nine DNA series from here just below the Shanghai Empire down to the foot of Africa. All those 10 nations of which African Americans descended from one of them. We have nine DNA series. You need something? Yes. In Africa. Now it's answered this age old question. No, it's good. No, being told, oh. never allowed to learn that they came from beautiful cities and told they came from a jungle. How could a people survive? How could become champions in everything because they have nine DNA series, while the rest of the world has only six. This is why they copyrighted this. And you notice on the outside of this, now this map is taken. Now, again, that information, and there is a map that does, ex that does exist where they talk about the DNA series and who has the greatest potential for being genius and the highest intellect on the planet. And that the more DNA series that you have, it is the greater chance that you will achieve that. And you can go and research it for yourself and see over the rest of the earth, everyone else has six. You are the only people that have nine. Now, mind you that there's black people again that I stated when I showed you the map in the beginning, when Master Farad Muhammad was in Arabia, that he could have easily, if he was just looking for Black people, found us inside of Nigeria, Ethiopia, the Sudan, Liberia, Chad. He could have easily stopped because the most densely populated place where they have Afro descendants that were brought to the Americas and or slavery diaspora is in Brazil, but he didn't stop in Brazil. There was something about you, and there is something about you that were uniquely special. So I'll go back and I'll read this to you again, that it was believed that the lost tribe was the key to unlock the DNA of the original people of the earth. This DNA had been dormant in a dormant state for 50,000 years. There were originally 12 strands of DNA. Currently, 10 of these are dormant. So is there something inside of you? Is there something that's unique about you? Do you hold the key to peace on earth? Not only does this say it, but that's also what the Bible and the scripture says, that 144,000 would establish the kingdom of God heaven on earth and they're having discussion there's verification that once master Farah muhammad found you once he concluded his study once he concluded his research he went back and told him we found you. and not only have you been found but you were found dead to the knowledge of yourself you were found absent your fundamental human rights, your ancestral language, your ancestral religion, your ancestral culture. Despite being found absent those things, despite being taken from a living state, a living perpendicular to a dead man, you were found creating you in your dead state. You were found making inventions that will eventually helped them perfect the entire earth. The entire earth knows Michael Jordan, but who is Michael Jordan? He's an ex-slave 
in the United States of America. The entire earth knows Mike Tyson, Muhammad Ali, these black people in the United States of America. But you'd be hard pressed if I asked you who was the greatest basketball player in Africa. You'd be hard pressed if you compared him to Michael Jordan, who's the greatest boxer in the world. You'd be hard pressed to compare him to Muhammad Ali. There's something about you, there's something in you, there's something different about you that's different than all of the people on the planet. And as you were found in your dead state, you were still found created. So I'm gonna to go to some of your creations, some of the things that you were doing in your dead state and some of the things that you are still doing if you had not accepted the knowledge of yourself, that means that you're still in your dead state. But I'll go to a small list and show you some of the things that you were doing <laughs> while you were asleep. I can only imagine what you're gonna do once you get up. People with ADHD save 10 hours studying with this Chrome extension. But no, by all means, go ahead. Welcome back to my channel, guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. All right, so let's get the list started off with this Black Queen, Patricia Bath, who is the first Black female doctor in 1986 to invent the laser phaco probe, which has revolutionized the treatment of cataract. Thank you, Pat. George Washington Carver is our next Black inventor who discovered over 300 uses of peanut to include peanut butter, cooking oil, and of course, printer ink. All right, can you live without any of these items? Alexander Miles invented the automatic device to open elevator doors. Because of his invention, we are able to enjoy this modern luxury. Thank you, Alex. Morgan is the inventor of something many utilize every day, the traffic signal. He created this after witnessing so many accidents on busy intersections. Thank you, Morgan, for your invention. Charles Dew invented the modern blood bank, which has gone on to save thousands of lives. It sure has. Thank you for your invention. Again now. I just want to point out to you that while these inventions, while these inventions are being made, you've already lost your human rights. You've already lost your ancestral culture. You've already lost your ancestral religion. You've already lost your mother tongue. For all express purposes, while you're creating the street light, what would traffic be like today without the street light? Totally chaotic. You've already invented or inventing the blood bank while you were in your dead state. That's because you have nine DNA series and the rest of the men on the earth have six. There was something that took place with some of our people inside of Africa. The reason that Master Farah Muhammad passed over there. That's something that took place with our people inside of Brazil. The reason why Master Farah Muhammad passed over there. That's something that took place with our people inside of England and France. The reason why Master Farah Muhammad, after doing this research, passed over them. There was something specifically that took place with you. The reason why Master Farah Muhammad locked in on you. I'm trying to get you to see what you were doing when you were found in your dead state. You were still creating. You were still inventing. You were still displaying levels of genius that had been seen by any other human being that's affecting every other human being on the planet. Though you were beat down, though you were trodden in the dirt, they still couldn't stop that God essence from coming out of you. They still couldn't stop you from producing men and women who are changing the earth right now to this day while you were yet being called a slave, while you were yet being totally deracinated of the knowledge of yourself. You were still producing. You were still doing. 
And then as much as you were doing that inside of an oppressive state, we're told to look forward to the contributions that you got to make to the rest of the planet. Once you get up, join onto your own and put into a state where we can produce a God as opposed to producing niggas. I'll give you a few more of the inventions that you create, just a little bit more. While you were asleep. Frederick Jones invented the mobile refrigeration machine that is used to transport blood, food, and medicine. We use it today to transport all these items mentioned. What else could carry your milk to the grocery store so it's not spoiled? Next up is Louis Latimore. Tell me who does not use the light bulb? It is very controversial, and they're saying that the light bulb was created by someone else, but without the filament, could it work? Thank you for your contribution, Louis Latimore. Daniel Williams, another successful Black inventor who was the first to successfully complete open heart surgery. Thank you so much for your contribution. Shirley did come through for us, who led the research that developed caller ID, touchstone phone, and call waiting. Your contribution is well needed today. J. Ross Moore, you came through for us. You know, instead of having to hang the clothes outside on a line, you invented the dryer. Thank you for your contribution. From one foodie to another, thank you, George, for coming through with your invention, the potato chips. Thank you, sir. Thomas, you are indeed a genius inventor, and thank you for inventing the mirror so I can look at my beautiful face. Thank you, Sarah, for this improved ironing board that was originally just a horizontal block of wood. And now you've created a more narrow and curved board. All right. Thank you so much. You'd be ashamed to see us still ironing on our beds today. Marie has developed an early version of home security system. Yep. Sis came through with that home security. Thank you so much for your contribution. Black inventions are the cornerstone of society as we know it. So again, you see Black people in the United States of America making contributions to the rest of the planet in their dead state. That had to have been one of the things that Master Farad Muhammad saw in you when he concluded that these are the people. Remember the Honorable Elijah Muhammad says that France and England, that they did make the black man a slave, but that they didn't totally wipe his mind clean. He wouldn't kill the way that you and I were killed. We were totally eliminated mentally. And then they buried us in the King James version of the Bible. So your recollection, your mental state of who you were had been totally wiped clean. And as it was totally wiped clean with nothing left, and they gave you the name Negro, you would think that you wouldn't produce anything, especially since at that time, the word that was going around the earth about you is that you were savages. America even put it inside of their constitution that you're three-fifths of a person. And still inside of that state, some of us to this day are still in that state. You hadn't been waking up as of yet. Still inside of that state, you're making untold contributions to the planet Earth. Not just to America, not just to Europe, not just to France, but also to the continent of Africa. If you look at the continent of Africa now, they'll tell you that a lot of them are behind us. That they lag behind the United States of America. A lot of these countries are called third world countries. The thing that these countries are missing is you and I. The reason why America was able to do what they was able to do is because they got you over here. And you got to understand that. You got to embrace that and know that you don't go to the party. The party follows you. You are the life of the party. Without you, there is no party. 
without you, the United States of America could have never done what it is that they've done. They can never be the greatest and richest and most powerful country on earth without you. I'm gonna go to some more information to what Caucasian gentlemen is gonna bear witness. We were told that we came from Arabia, went into Africa. That's our path. 50,000 years ago, the tribe of Shabazz left Arabia. So at 50,000 years ago, the tribe of Shabazz left Arabia and went into the jungles of Africa. And I'll put the map back up so I can show you again. Then more than likely, you came from what will be known as that northern part. It's closer to Arabia. And you're going to hear this Caucasian gentleman bear witness to that. If you don't connect the dots, the picture isn't clear. And you'd end up being back inside of Africa. No, we were told that the holy city of Mecca, Arabia, is where the knowledge and wisdom of the original man first started when the planet was found. Home for us, as one of the brothers made mention to me, that the Savior told him, brother, if anything take place, keep the people mind focused on Arabia. That's our job, to keep your mind on focused on Arabia. That's home. That's where we're headed to. He said, we may go by way of the islands. We may stop in one or two countries headed there in Africa, so on and so forth. We are to return home to Mecca Arabia. Those of us who can wrap our mind around returning, those of us who can phantom the idea of uprooting, leaving the United States of America, you are what's called one of the stars. You are one of the 144,000. That's who we're after. The rest of our people, we are told, are too poisoned, too rusty, will not accept the knowledge of themselves. Master Farah Muhammad, upon having this conversation with Honorable Elijah Muhammad, said that he wished to beat that old prophet's prediction of 144,000, that he wanted to get each and every one of you all. His desire was to save all of you all that he would climb up a mountain 40 miles high and eat rattlesnakes just to teach one of us. A man that has unconditional love for you. A man that has delved into the books, deluge of information for you. You will never be able to exhaust the information. We were told that if all the rivers were ink and all of the trees were pens, you could never exhaust Allah's wisdom and information. That's constantly gonna be the un folding of the information. You not only are to return home, but you are to be given information that's going to put you on the top of your brothers and sisters in Asia. You are to be taught 20 to 25 years inside of Egypt. Listen to me now, hear me. You are to be taught 20 to 25 years inside of Egypt. And after being taught that 20 to 25 years inside of Egypt, that information, that the scientists didn't give your brothers inside of Asia, that they didn't give your people inside of Arabia because they were waiting on you. They were looking for a certain thing that's inside of you and they found it. They're waiting to give you that information. That information will put you on top. Just like the Caucasians, I told you when they were in the caves, they were given information that put them on top. You know what that information was? Superior weaponry. We are number them 11 to one globally. Numerically, they cannot stop you. So they were given information on how to neutralize and or on how to get the upper hand. The way that that one person was able to dominate the 11 people was weaponry. When they found us, we had bows, we had spears, we had arrows, we had stones. Think about all of the ancient lands that they invaded. When they came to those ancient lands, even though they were strangers and outnumbered, they subdued those people because they had advanced weaponry. They had pistols, they had Gatling guns, they had machine guns, they had rifles, they had cannons. And based on the weaponry that they had, some of you all maybe never even analyzed this, based on the weaponry that they had, it propelled them in the front of all of the people, original people who were on the earth trillions of years before they were here. To this day, the thing that they use to subdue nations of the earth is their superior weaponry. You know now that that time has passed because these other nations got the same. They're not the only country with a nuclear bomb. They're not the only country with a Navy. They're not the only country 
with an Air Force. They're not the only country that's capable of flying across the Atlantic and uh, Pacific Ocean within hours and dropping deadly bombs on these people in their cities. That lets you know that there's a changing of guard. That lets you know that there's a different time because instead of them being advanced now, the playing field is equal. Do you hear me? So I'm gonna go to this Caucasian gentleman and he's going to further solidify your claim for being the Asiatic black man, the maker, the owner, cream of the planet or God of the universe. There is none other than you and I. You just got to embrace your destiny and go on, on be that man, be that woman, be that people. What's the significance of all this? Well, to explain, we are joined tonight by Michael Novacek, the Provost of Science at the Museum of Natural History here in New York City. Welcome back. Nice to be here. What are the implications of this? What does it mean? There are really two dimensions of the implications. One, purely in terms of biology and evolution. The, the genes that we see, the gene map that's been created here, tells a very fascinating historical and evolutionary story about populations, where they once were, where they went to through migration, and so forth. In the other dimension, there are huge practical applications here of this kind of map because we can use it and we can use it as a starting point to resolve uh, questions about that are useful to medicine and pharmaceuticals and other other activities because you know if we we look for genetic risk factors in local populations and so forth these are important ways of making our medical diagnosis and treatment more sophisticated. So this is saying something about us. Uh, socially, but also saying something about us scientifically and medically. To find out where you are, you need a map. And this is a map that gives us orientation for a lot of great scientific and applied questions. And this sort of map is relevant to all of us, regardless of where you live today. It absolutely is, because uh, the study places this map of the genes, the genetic makeup of, of African populations within the whole framework of humans worldwide. So for example, it substantiates a lot of the work in paleontology and archeology span that says Africans or humans actually worldwide came from migratory populations that came out of Northeast Africa and moved into the Middle East. And there are connections, there were also investigations of African-Americans showing the connections between African-Americans and Western African populations as well. How was the information gathered? I presume they had to travel across the continent and, and sometimes into very difficult areas. One of the really striking things about this study is the massive effort it took. They've been collecting blood. This team has been collecting blood samples for over 10 years, not only in major population centers within Africa, but within uh, far-flung tribes and very isolated areas, using jeeps, trekking into the wilderness. It's been a real adventure for them. And they've sampled intensively about 3,000 individuals and I think more than 113 populations of Africans. Were there any real surprises? Anything that jumped up? Well, I think that actually the, the, the research itself in some ways substantiates some of the other work that's been done based on other genes and fossils showing, for example, the origins of, other, of, of people outside of Africa from the Northeast on the continent. On the other hand, there's some very interesting patterns. For example, hunter-gatherers seem to be, today, the hunter-gatherer populations or cultures in Africa today seem to be fragments of a much larger population in the past, maybe some 35,000 years ago in Western parts of Africa. Michael Novacek, thank you. Fascinating stuff. Glad to be here. Now, the title of that video is Africans, are more genetically diverse than the rest of the world. Now, I'm gonna go back to the map because I wanna show you that he's buried in witness, but he kinda sorta has it in reverse. Because when we go back to the map, he said that the North, they came from the Northeastern part of the map. So if you go to the North 
eastern part of Africa, you're going to run into northeastern. And he said that we went from Africa into Arabia. That's backwards. We actually came out of Arabia, then went down into the jungles of Africa, as we was told by Master Farah Muhammad to conquer those jungles 50,000 years ago. But nevertheless, you have him as he's trying to connect the dots, seeing the connection between Arabia and Africa. If you talk to the people of Sudan, one of the arguments that they have in Sudan is that they are not Africans, but that they're Arabs. That's a well-known argument today. If you talk to the people of Egypt and they try to disconnect Egypt from Africa and say that Egypt was a part of Arabia, not a part of Africa, so that they can kind of sort of pull the black face off from it and or separate it from it, which in my opinion, six in one hand, half a dozen in the other one, it's the same thing, whether you want to call it Arabia and or Africa, you can see where they connect. You know the story of Napoleon who went to war with the pyramids and or went to war with the Sphinx. He blew the nose off of the Sphinx because the nose on the Sphinx, that decisive feature of the black man having a large nose and having those prominent lips. And that he was of the mindset that black people, because it was being taught, it was being propagated throughout the entire world that black people were subhuman, that they were savages, that they were Negroes, that they were stupid, they were ignorant, that they weren't inventors, that they weren't at the apex of society. So he couldn't believe when he looked at the pyramids that black people had erected the pyramids. But the Sphinx was put there, according to some, to hunt all mankind. It was put there as a challenge for them to try and duplicate the mathematical perfection, scientists, the genius that came out of the mind of the black man, as it still stands today as one of the seven great wonders of the earth, the pyramids. So looking at our position in Arabia, coming from Arabia to Egypt and or to the Sudan and or to Ethiopia, there's another interesting history about that particular part of the world. When you go down into Ethiopia, when you go into Yemen, you see Arabia and you see Yemen. The Yemenese, the people in Yemen, are Black people, Black Muslims. If you see them, they're just as dark as you and I. Now, if you look at Yemen and you look at Ethiopia, we could have taken any one of those routes. We could have came through Yemen into Ethiopia. We could have came through Saudi Arabia into Egypt, eventually entered into Libya. The entire continent was colonized with the exception of two countries, Ethiopia and Libya. One of the most interesting histories about Ethiopia is that they say Ethiopia actually saved Islam, that the light was being put out everywhere else with the exception of that place in Arabia. So coming through that particular part of the earth and then being kidnapped, taken from home, being brought to the United States of America and being used like cows. As I told you on last week, the, the process of breaking a slave, the process of taking you from a God to a Negro, it was a horrific, lengthy process. It didn't just take place overnight. They didn't just get you and make you a slave and put you in chains brought you over on the bottom of a ship in three months, and three months later, you agreed to everything that the Caucasians were telling you. In fact, 400 some years later, they still have a hard time trying to control you. But that process of breaking you, that process of taking away everything that made you a human being, that left you nothing, it still did not take away the creative part of you, the creative genius of you, which is God that was still intact. And the proof that it was still intact is the things that you were doing, creating and or, been, and, and or inventing while you were under such a system. Any other people under a system like that could not produce the things that you produced, the contributions you made to the world while being made a slave. 
In fact, there were people who did not go, who were not going through what it is that you were going through, and they still did not produce the things that you produce. They still didn't make the contributions to society that you made. There's something special about you, black man, black woman. There's something special about you, tribe of Shabazz. There's something special about you, the man that got nine DNA series versus everybody else that got six. They were looking for that. They were in search of that, Master Farah Muhammad and his father and the scientists. And when they found it, they went back and let the rest of the world know, we found him, we got our man, Mr. Shabazz. Now began to teach him, aggressively teach him and get the information to him because the window was closing. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad told us that Master Farah Muhammad told him three years, day and night. He said it was like he was prison. He gave and he just poured into the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And as like when you pour water, coffee, and or tea into a glass, per chance there's a drop on the side of that glass that rolls down. So as you're pouring all of it into the glass, there may be a little small trickle and or drop that you don't get. Likewise, when Honorable Elijah Muhammad was giving you information, I'm almost certain that there are some things that Master Farah Muhammad told him that you didn't get each and every drop of, you didn't get every squeeze of it. But in as much as you are who you are, Mr. Shabazz, the Asiatic black man, the maker, the owner, cream of the planet Earth, it is to be given to you. When you hear that bell in your ear, we're told what? That's God, Allah, trying to get in contact with you as somebody, a brother and or sister, sending you a message. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad explained it to us how Jesus was able to tune in. And he told you how to do that. He said, the cleaner you are, the easier it is for you to hear. It's a little bit easier to hear a message than it is to send one. But nevertheless, when you get yourself clean and you get yourself right, you will begin, you'll begin to receive information. Donald Elijah Muhammad say, at least we got that ear ringing now. But in the Caucasian society, if you got that ear ringing, what do they tell you? We want to give you some medicine to stop it. Don't let them give you no medicine to stop your ear from ringing. Downloading that information, getting the messages that's being sent to you, getting the things that's essential to your rise, reminding you of who you are, reminding you of what you did, Reminding you of your responsibility. Past, you had a responsibility. Present, you have a responsibility. And in the future, you have a responsibility. And they want to stop that. They're actively engaged in poisoning our young men and our young women. They're actively engaged in trying to destroy the reproductive organs of our young men and our young women. Because they are well aware that inside of that little black girl, inside of that little black boy, lies God, lies Mr. Shabazz lies the greatest architect that ever lived that designed the heaven and the earth. That DNA strand that's been locked for 50,000 years is inside of you. That's what I really want to tell you. And I'm trying to shake you and get you up and show you how to get to it and show you what to do with it, show you how to use it. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said to us in the theology of time that the black man is God and that all Allah has to do is say, be and it is. And he said that one day, one of you that's listening to me now, well, how the exact same power that the first God has to be able to say be, and it is. But it's inside of one of us. In fact, it's inside of all of us. It's just the kind of preparation that you do to get it to come out. That's the reason why that information is given to you and how to eat to live. Fasting for three days. Fasting for nine days. Fasting for 15 days. Fasting for 40 days. What do you think the Honorable Elijah Muhammad was doing? when he was on a run for approximately 10 to 12 years of his life, when he went inside of these people's houses and the history says that the messenger would lock himself in a room for three days. He wouldn't come out unless he had to use the washroom. What do you think he was doing? Who do you think he was trying to get in contact with? What do you think he was conjuring up? A man from Sandersville, Georgia with a third grade education. Whether you like him or love him, you can't say that he didn't have an effect on the entire world. He had an effect on all major religions on the globe. Christianity, Judaism, Orthodox Islam, Buddhism. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad had an effect on each and every one of these people. He had a message for each and every one of these people. And nobody disputed him. We got a few of our so-called brothers and sisters today that want to disrespect the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. And I say so-called because if you was a real brother or a real sister, there's no way you would disrespect the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. There's no way you would disrespect the name a master for Rob Muhammad. Men that put their lives on the line for you. Men that's recorded in the history went to prison for you. Men that's recorded made unknown sacrifice for you. Our Lord and Savior, the Honorable Silas Muhammad, went to jail for you. Our Lord and Savior, the Honorable Silas Muhammad, put himself 
and his entire family on the line for you, going to the UN, fighting for your women's rights. And you got the unmitigated gall to not even say thank you? Now I don't think I'll call you brother or sister. So I'm talking to the real brothers and or sisters who can hear what I'm saying. I'm talking to that 144,000 that can hear who you are, respond to it, and get up, Ishmael. Get up, Abraham C. Get up, black man, black woman. It's your time. It has been verified. It has been universally signed out throughout the earth that you are the men and the women that hold the key to unlocking peace on earth. I'll go back to one other video of these inventions to show you. Now, mind you, in these inventions, you were being killed. You were being totally deracinated. You were being disrespected. You were being dehumanized. You were being reduced down. What people do you know while being pulled down lifts up the rest of the earth? What people do you know while being torn down gave some to society and humanity that everybody can use from America to the East? You did that. You're doing that. They ain't doing it in the East. They ain't doing it in Africa. They ain't doing it in Europe. They ain't doing it in Italy. You're doing that. So who in the world are you if you can do that while being torn down? You can't tell me that you ain't that man, Mr. Shabazz. I'm talking to that man behind the eyes. I'm talking to that woman that's behind the eyes. I'm talking to those people that's destined to be great, to those people that's destined to rule the earth. I'm talking to those people who need to accept, embrace your destiny. If you don't accept and embrace your destiny, you'll be wiped off the face of the earth. It'll never be written out of history that God gave you an opportunity to reclaim your own and you reject it. Don't let that be said about you. That's the scenario too. Allah is capable of giving the kingdom to whom he pleased. And if nobody qualifies for it, he's capable of outright destroying it. That's an option. That's a clause inside of the contract. If you don't move. Now you see the reason why I want you to move so much. And I'm saying to Allah and the 24 scientists, our Lord and Savior, even if it's five or 10 of us that embrace the information and say, here am I, take me, let us go forward and produce from ourselves in that small community, in that small society, the people that will ultimately come forth and fulfill that prophecy of Abraham's seed returning to the top of the earth. This is our destiny. It's totally different than the Caucasian white man destiny. Stop trying to be like them. Stop letting them fool you. You watch too much TV. You eat too much food. You listen to too much bad music. That's why you can't hear me. That's why you can't connect. It is war, war, war. That's what it is. And I'm trying to tell you that we are thoroughly engaged in it. Whether you want to be or not, you're inside of the war right now. When I told you about the rest of the men having six DNA strands and you got nine, and that the people with nine got the greatest possibility of becoming creative geniuses, that's war. That information is to go against him. When I'm showing you that you came out of Arabia into Africa and descended on down, that's war. They don't want you to know that. They want you to think that your life started in Mississippi or Alabama as a Negro. And the sad part about it in 2021 is some of you all as grown men still believe that. You're still teaching that garbage to your children. You're still teaching your children about Santa Claus and you know it's not true. You're teaching your children about the Easter Bunny and you know it's not true. You celebrating Halloween right now today and say you're doing it for the kids. If you're gonna do anything for the kids, tell them the truth. I'm gonna go to this other video and let you see some of the things that you were doing while you were asleep, while you were dead, while they were in the process of killing you. You're making unknown contributions to every man, woman, and child on the planet. Every man, woman, and child on the planet use their street light. Every man, woman, and child on the planet at one way or another benefit from that blood bank. Every man, woman, and child on the planet using the cell phone, the satellite, washing machine, dryer. You did all that street sweeper, making the light to where, come on, man. They went over there making them lights over there in, 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 in Arabia. You made them over here. You made the telephone over here. The people in Arabia were scared of that. They were saying that that wasn't the work of Allah. That was the work of the devil. They were afraid to move forward. While you, the person that had been kidnapped, the person that had been talked about and dogged out, was still making inventions in your dead state. Come on, man. Come on. Stand with us. Don't stand against us. Make an argument for the information to be right. Don't make an argument for it to be wrong. Don't have me waste my time and my energy on you. That's what he wants us to do. Go against each other. Fight against each other. Game bang. Go through political. I'm a Democrat. You're a Republican. Go through religion. I'm a Muslim. You're a Christian. 
I'm a vice lord, you a GD, I'm a crip, you a blood. That's his plan. That's how the 11, the one was able to control the 11. One of his methods was divide and conquer. We, we're not going to participate in that today. I'm giving you information that I know you need. I'm giving you information that I know you can use. I'm giving you information that will save your life and save your children's lives. If you do not accept this information, some of us right now, while you're yet listening to me, know that your children are engaged in activity that if you don't check it, it's going to lead to their end. Some of us that's listening right now, you are engaged in activity that if you don't check it, it's going to lead to your end. You overeat. You over drinking. Stop it. Embrace the information. Fight with us. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said, the heaven that awaits you is so beautiful you can't even comprehend. There's places that's being built for you. Beautiful places. Castles. Mansions that are being built for you with all of the modern amenities. We're not telling you to go in reverse and braid your head, put a bone in your nose and, and go around half naked and use the washroom in the woods. Who's trying to do that? How does this man, Master Farah Muhammad, look to you? He looks clean, doesn't he? Well-groomed, doesn't he? All the modern amenities that you see right now that they are waiting for you, they're building them for you to this day. They're making preparations for you to return home. A lot of lie to you. It's immaterial for him to lie to you. Let me, let me get to this video. So let's say you have to read an incredibly long email from your... boss that you have to finish before the big meeting starts in 10 minutes. In this video, we will be highlighting 10 inventors and scientists that help develop modern society. Number one. That help do what? 10 inventors that help to develop modern society. How on earth did you do that as a slave? Number one, Marie Van Britten Brown. Born in 1922, she was the inventor of the first home security system. As a nurse living in Queens, New York, Marie responded to the high crime rate of her neighborhood by implementing her own security system. This system included door peepholes, cameras that allowed her to see who was at the front door, and two-way microphones. If needed, there was also a push button that notified police. Number two, Garrett Morgan. Born in 1877, he was the inventor of the three light traffic signal and the safety hood. He patented the mechanical traffic signal and sold it to General Electric for only 40K. His safety hood, which filtered out pollutants and smoke, became the foundation of future gas masks. His biggest challenge was trying to sell the safety hoods to the South. Rumor has it, as a marketing technique, he hired a white actor to pose as the inventor and disguise himself as an Indian chief. They would wear the masks, enter areas of poor air quality and would come out breathing fine. Number three, Louis Latimer. Born in 1848, he was the inventor and draftsman that helped patent the light bulb and telephone. He worked with Alexander Graham Bell and assisted him in drafting the patent for the telephone. He also worked with Thomas Edison and improved his design of the light bulb. Edison's light bulb was lit using an electrified filament of paper and would burn out rather quickly. Louis Latimer improved that design and patented the incandescent light bulb with carbon filament. He later improved the manufacturing process and developed the threaded socket that we're familiar with today. Number four, Otis Boykin. Born in 1920, his work with electrical resistors led to his invention of the control unit for the pacemaker. His patent of the wire resistor had the ability to, quote, withstand extreme accelerations and shocks and great temperature changes without danger of breakage of the fine resistance wire or other detrimental effects, end quote. This precise regulation allowed the device to create electrical impulses that would help to regulate irregular heartbeats. Number five, George Carruthers. Born in 1939, he is the inventor of the UV camera that was famously used on the Apollo 16 mission back in 1972. This camera provided the first evidence for the existence of molecular hydrogen in space. UV emissions give clear indication of the temperature of really hot objects. However, most UV is absorbed by the Earth's atmosphere. 
By placing the camera on the moon, it captured hundreds of images of new stars and nebula. His inventions also captured photos of Halley's Comet. Number six, Bessie Blount Griffin. Born in 1914, she invented an electronic feeding device for amputees. Bessie studied nursing and developed a passion for physical therapy, a profession that was not yet formalized during her time. Often the equipment that she used to treat her patients were inadequate, so she used innovative methods to treat them. One of the ways she enhanced her patients' treatments was by incorporating interpretive dance. She also made sure her patients felt confident in their own abilities by allowing them to perform basic functions like eating. Her electronic feeding device allowed patients to feed themselves through the use of a motor and a tube. Number seven, Lonnie Johnson. Born in 1949, he is the inventor of the super soaker. He was a natural tinker and grew up building robots and go-karts out of scraps. He worked as an engineer for the US Air Force and NASA and worked on multiple space projects, including the Jupiter Galileo probe mission and the Mars Observer project. While working on one of his personal projects at home, he accidentally shot a stream of water across his bathroom. This accident would be the basis of his super soaker gun. This toy made more than 200 million in sales and eventually became one of the world's best-selling toys. Number eight, Charles Henry Turner. Born in 1867, he was a zoologist and the first person to discover that insects' behavior can vary based on social interactions. Turner published more than 70 papers and served as one of the pioneers for animal behavior. He also showed that insects are capable of hearing and learning. One of his most famous projects he worked on was with honeybees and their ability to recognize pattern and color. Number nine, Mark E. Dean. Born in 1957, he is the inventor of the colored PC and the first gigahertz chip. Along with his partner, Dennis Moeller, they developed the internal architecture of the ISA, which allows you to plug accessories like keyboards or printers onto a monitor, regardless of what brand it is or how long ago it was bought. He eventually developed the colored PC and with a team created the first gigahertz chip, which can conduct a billion calculations in one second. Number 10, May C. Jemison. Born in 1956, she is a physician, engineer, and the first female African-American astronaut. She attended Stanford where she received her Bachelor of Science in Chemical Engineering. Upon graduation, she attended Cornell University to pursue medicine. Jemison is fluent in Russian, Japanese, and Swahili, and worked with the Peace Corps for two and a half years as a medical officer. In June 1987, she became the first African-American woman to be selected for the NASA program. And in 1992, she served the role of mission specialist and became the first African-American woman to travel in space. These pioneers of science have pushed the that while you were being dragged through the mud of civilization, deemed as being less than human, you have made untold contributions to Earth globally. And my conclusion, I'll read it to you again. Master Farah Muhammad's father, wanted to go and search the lost tribe of Shabazz. That tribe was taken into bondage in a strange land that was not their own. Master Alfonso would attempt to enter America, but was denied entry. As a result of this, he desired to pursue a son that would be able to enter America more easily than a pitch black man of royalty. It was believed that the lost tribe was the key to unlock the DNA of the original people of the planet Earth. This DNA has been in a dormant state for the past 50,000 years. There were originally 12 strands of DNA. Currently, 10 of these strands are dormant. You are told that today that you use approximately nine to 7% of our brain. What's going to take place when you can use 100% of your brain, Mr. and Mrs. Shabazz? Slum like.